Dive into the hidden world of music and fame where bloodlines meet spotlight. Ever thought the king of pop and Stevie Wonder shared more than just the stage? Or puzzled over how Cory Booker and RuPaul could be anything more than fabulous friends? Get ready for a jaw-dropping journey through the secret family connections of music royalty that will leave you amazed. This is one reveal you don't want to miss. You are the faith in my heart. Starting our gossip train with none other than Lenny Kravitz, the man who's practically the dictionary definition of cool. This guitar-slinging, leather-pants-wearing heartthrob has been setting stages ablaze since the 80s. But did you know his swagger runs in the family? Yup, Lenny's tossing the football with none other than Al Roker at Family Picnic. Al Roker, America's favorite weatherman, and Lenny Kravitz are second cousins. Imagine the dinner conversations between those two. Hey, cuz, rocked any stadiums lately? Nah, just predicting hurricanes and winning hearts. So next time you're bobbing your head to it ain't over till it's over or checking if you need an umbrella courtesy of Al Roker, remember, talent, charisma, and the ability to look good in anything apparently runs in the family. Baby, that's just why I love you so much. Meet Monica Denise Arnold, or as the world prefers to call her, Monica the vocal powerhouse, melody magician, and production prodigy. This songstress soared to stardom after joining forces with Rowdy Records in 1993, launching her career with the banging debut album Miss Thang just two twirls around the sun later. But Monica isn't just any four-time Grammy nominee. She's a Grammy conqueror snagging the award for best R&B performance by a duo or group with vocals for her chart-topping duet, The Boy Is Mine, alongside her partner in crime, Brandy. Yet, the plot thickens in this tale of talent. The music mojo doesn't just swirl around Monica. It's a family affair. Her cousin? None other than the lyrical genius and hip-hop heavyweight, Ludacris. Get back, get back, you don't know me like that! Woo! So come on, come on, don't! With an MTV Video Award and three Grammy Awards under his belt, Ludacris didn't just enter the music scene. He exploded into it. Starting as a DJ who adored beats more than sleep, he dropped his debut album Incognigro in 1999, only to turn heads and twist ears nationwide a year later with Back for the First Time. Clearly, when it comes to Monica and Ludacris, Genius doesn't just run in the family, it's Sprint. I will never find another lover sweeter than you, sweeter than you. Imagine this, if you will. Two brothers, Cedric, but we call him Casey because why not? And Joel, who prefers the moniker JoJo, are not just any random fellas. These siblings share blood ties with none other than the vocal powerhouse and American Idol queen, Fantasia Barino. Yes, darling, you heard it right. Musical talent doesn't just run in this family. Like Monica and Ludacris, it also sprints. In 1997, the dynamic duo released Love Always, and sweetie, it wasn't just any album. It sold a whopping four million copies. Talk about moving on up. Enter stage, Cousin Fantasia. I don't wanna make you unhappy if you're not happy. who didn't just walk into the spotlight, she bulldozed her way through it by winning American Idol in 2004. As if that wasn't enough, her debut album, Free Yourself, went platinum by 2006, snagging her four Grammy nods and her first number one single, I Believe. It's not just a family tree, it's a family forest of pure, unadulterated talent. So who's winning the family feud of the chart? Stay tuned. This melodious battle is far from over. Twitter has been ablaze with a breaking news flash that's got everyone who's anyone chuckling into their morning coffee. In an astonishing revelation, it turns out that Ray J and Brandy are not just two peas in a pot of talent, they're siblings. Yes, you heard it right, Brandy, our beloved 90s TV darling from Moesha, and her brother Ray J, who casually popped up here and there on the show, share more than just a knack for stealing the spotlight. 
Now, if you're like me and thought Brandy's only claim to fame was her ability to belt out tunes like I Wanna Be Down and her legendary catfight and musical form The Boy Is Mine with Monica, then buckle up. Not only did Brandy snatch a Grammy with her second album Never Say Never, but she also passed the musical genius gene down to her brother Ray J, who has been bopping around the industry in his own right. Just when you thought this family couldn't get any cooler, we discover that they're related to none other than the hip-hop maestro himself, Snoop Dogg. That's right, Snoop D-O-double-G is their first cousin. Can you imagine the family barbecues? Snoop laying down the beats, Brandy and Ray J harmonizing to the grill sizzle. Now that's a family reunion I'd pay to see. Let's talk about Diamante Valentin Harper, or as the world knows and loves her, Saweetie. She skated into our hearts and playlist in 2018 with Icy Girl, turning the music charts into her personal ice rink. But here's where it gets funny. Saweetie isn't the only one in her family who knows how to drop a beat. Her uncle, the man, the myth, the legend, who made us all do the hammer time, Stanley Kirk Burrell, also known as MC Hammer. That's right, while Saweetie is freezing over the charts, her uncle was too legit to quit way before hashtags were a thing. Pass the mic takes on a whole new meaning at family reunions. Saweetie's spitting bars on one side and MC Hammer sliding across the floor on the other. Talk about a dynamic duo. So while Saweetie is busy being a girl boss, let's not forget the family legacy. It's like talent is in their family heirloom and honestly, who needs silver spoons when you can have platinum hits? In the world of Saweetie and MC Hammer, it's clear. You don't just inherit genes, you inherit a whole recording studio. Now, if only we could inherit some of that talent, right? In the neon-tinted, baggy-pants era of 90s rap, Dwight Arrington, or as he's more famously known, Heavy D, strutted onto the scene, leading the chart-topping ensemble Heavy D and the Boys. This squad dropped beats like hot potatoes across the United States, with their five albums getting the Midas touch from hip-hop royalty like Teddy Riley and DJ Premier. Besides being the maestro behind the mic, Dwight moonlighted as a talent scout, unearthing gems like Soul For Real and Monifa. Yet his biggest discovery wasn't found scouting the streets, but at the family barbecue. His younger first cousin, Pete Rock, a future hip-hop heavyweight. Heavy D tossed Pete into the hip-hop mix, and Pete didn't just swim, he swam backstroke, producing bangers for Heavy D and the Boys' third album, Peaceful Journey. As Pete Rock's star rose, he ventured beyond his cousin's shadow, earning stripes as one of the industry's iconic producers. Despite his ascent to hip-hop nobility, Pete never forgot who handed him the crown always tipping his hat to Cousin Dwight as his musical muse. In a world where egos clash like cymbals, it's refreshing to see family ties knit tighter than Heavy D's dance moves. If you've seen the reality TV show Love & Hip Hop, you might know about Lyrica Anderson. Before her rise to fame, she served as a background vocalist for Jennifer Lopez and penned songs for A-list artists like Demi Lovato and Missy Elliott. Signed with Timbaland's Mosley Music Group, her music can be found on platforms like YouTube and Spotify. Her music has gained popularity over the years with albums like Adia in 2017, Bad Hair Day in 2020, even collaborating with big names like Wiz Khalifa and Eric Bellinger. But she isn't the only musical prodigy in the family, as her first cousins are none other than Lamaya and Megan Good. In 2001, Lamaya, alongside Letitia Harrison, Ardina Clark and lead singer Kiera Davis Martin formed the R&B group Isis. They performed the theme song for the BET talk show O oh Drama and served as spokespeople for hair care products. And while they may not enjoy the fantastic stardom of their cousin, they are still enjoying marital bliss. Beat him up! Beat him up! Beat him up! Beat him up! I was seeing double in the projects, mad at myself, wanna put it to the side. Baby Keem and Kendrick Lamar aren't just two peas in a pod musically. They're actual cousins. 
That's right, Baby Keem, the 20-year-old rap sensation known for his banger Orange Soda, isn't shy about flaunting his famous family ties. The cat was officially let out of the bag with the drop of Family Ties in August 2021, a track from Baby Keem's first big album, The Melodic Blue. This wasn't just any old song. It was Kendrick Lamar's grand entrance under the banner of P.G. Lang, a venture he helped kick off. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances, but that's a nigga with some counterfeits, but now I'm counting. And let's talk about the song's cover art for a second. A tip of the hat to Lamar's legendary Good Kid Mad City, showcasing not just their bloodline connection, but their killer combo on the mic, too. This single also marked Kendrick Lamar's big comeback to the limelight since his 2018 hit, Pray For Me, with The Weeknd for the Black Panther soundtrack. Nothing like a family reunion to coax a star back onto the stage, am I right? Keep it home a lot, cause when I frequent the spots that I'm known to rock, you hear the bass from the... Dr. Dre, the undisputed kingpin of beats, not only dominated the West Coast gangster rap scene, but also played fairy godmother to rap royalty like Snoop Dogg, Eminem, 50 Cent, and Kendrick Lamar. His magical journey kicked off with the world-class wrecking crew, took a detour to co-found the notorious N.W.A., and eventually led to sit him on the throne of Death Row Records. Enter Warren G., Dre's stepbrother, who didn't just ride the coattails of his family's fame. Nope, he brewed his own storm in the industry, whipping up the G-Funk sound that became synonymous with West Coast vibes. It was a clear black night, a clear white moon, Warren G. was on the street. In 93, Warren G's beats were so hot that even John Singleton couldn't resist featuring them in Poetic Justice, making Janet Jackson groove to his rhythm. With a little help from Dre, Warren G proved he wasn't just a sidekick in the family saga, but a heavyweight producer in his own right. 